In this video, I'm going to show you how to blur the background of your photos in Adobe Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate our original layer. So in the Layers panel, I can right click, Duplicate Layer. You can also use the shortcut Command J. Now on the top layer, I want to select out our subject of our photo. So in Photoshop, you can go over to the Object Selection tool, which is a new one. And there's actually this really useful button that's just Select Subject. This will automatically try to detect the subject of your photo and select it. Now it's not perfect and you can do some manual lasso adjustments and you can make sure you're working on add or subtract to selection mode. So in this case, uh, there's a part of the boot here that I can try to add to, to the selection. I can go to subtract from selection and there's a part of this stairwell that I don't want. And you can kind of manually refine things in that way. You see you have all these different tools available for you to select in Photoshop. But now what we want to do is create a layer mask. So I'll go to layer, layer mask, and we'll choose reveal selection. So what we've done now is we have this top layer and the top layer just has our selection. And then we have the original photo on the background. So we have this cool sort of separation that we've created. And this is actually the foundation for a lot of cool effects that you can do in Photoshop. Uh, for example, if you ever wanted to put text behind a person, you basically have separated these two layers and so you can sandwich any sort of effects between them. But if we want to just blur the background, all we're going to do on this background layer is go to Filter, Blur, and there's a couple different blurs you can do. There's also the Blur Gallery. Now, if you're working with blurs like Gaussian Blur, it's pretty simple. Um, you can just increase the strength. It doesn't look as realistic as like something out of a camera would, but it can be really good for YouTube thumbnails or just creating this contrast and pop of depth that you might need for a thumbnail or other sort of designs. A more realistic one if, is if you go to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. This one will allow you to create more of like a realistic blur that comes out of a camera lens. And in the right hand menu, you have some options such as the blur focal distance, the radius of the shape. So you can choose things like a square or triangle. And you can see rather than just like our traditional Gaussian blur, this one is taking those highlights and it's, we're kind of getting those bokeh blurs and those highlights. And you can even adjust the specular highlights and the threshold and the brightness of them. So we're getting a little bit of a more realistic look. Now, when I press OK, you'll see that we still have our original cutout on top. And so we've brought that back into focus and we get this realistic blur in the background, which is a little bit more cool. Obviously, it doesn't look as realistic as from a camera because, you know, this isn't how depth of field would work in real life, but it can still create a cool pop of contrast for you. Now, you do get this sort of haloing effect because, you know, the original subject is getting blurred too. And in cases like this, you can maybe try to even blur this layer mask. So maybe if I add a blur onto that layer mask, it can help with some of that haloing. I can even maybe go in there with a the brush tool on white and just try to softly brush away some of those edges. Another idea you can try so that you can avoid this haloing effect is before you blur your background layer, I'm actually just going to grab my regular lasso tool. I'm going to try to create a generally even outline around our subject. And then this time I'm just going to right click and fill with content aware fill. This should give us a decent fill. Try to make the op remove the object from an image. Uh, we don't have to worry too much if the middle looks kind of crazy. We're actually just trying to get rid of some of those edges that, that are going to halo later. And then when we do have our other layer back in the front of it, we can then blur the background layer now. So if I do the lens blur like before, now it'll blur it without catching the original edge. It looks a little bit more blended in and we get a more crisp edge that doesn't have that halo. So this is another tip that you can work in. Uh, remember, you still want to pay attention to the selection, make sure things are good. But that's one idea to work around. If you want a full tutorial on how to remove objects from your photo more in depth, 
I do have a separate tutorial all just on that content aware fill and other manual tools that you can touch up removing objects with. Also, as a final tip, uh, if you're doing for most blurs, the lens blur doesn't work this way, but if you right click and convert it to a smart object, now whenever you do apply an effect on it, so if I did, you'll see the lens blur is grayed out, but if I apply any other blur, then I am working on a smart layer. I can always double click back on those filters, those smart filters, and I can adjust them again so it's a little less permanent, less destructive, and I can always hide and, and bring things back. So work on smart layers if you aren't doing the lens blur, or just always keep a backup of your original photo on a layer underneath so you can always reference it and go back to it. But this is a cool and basic way to blur the backgrounds of your images in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can check out hundreds of more Photoshop tutorials in the playlist on my channel. My name is Justin Odisho. You can subscribe to stay tuned for new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.